Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Trent. This is Rams Talk. Thank you for watching the Rams Cowboys Divisional Playoff Edition. Man, that was a great game. Loved every minute of it. Um, and before I get into the game and everything, I want to thank all of the new subscribers who have just jumped on board. Uh, since I put out the, the Cowboys Rams game previews, a lot of new subscribers have come on. Some Cowboy fans, some NFL fans, a lot of Rams fans. Just want to say thank you to all of you for everyone, for all the legacy subscribers, people who've had my back uh, ever since. Thank you so much for your continued support. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. A lot of good stuff and the season is is still going. So there's going to be more and more content. But this is going to be my game wrap up. Uh, Cowboys versus Rams uh, edition. You can also find me on Twitter at Real LA Rams Talk. My voice is still a little hoarse, getting over a cold. But uh, yesterday and last night's game was the best medicine anyone could ever ask for. Um, and for longtime Rams fans, this is sweet. This is great. This is the first Rams playoff victory since 2004. And I started thinking about that and it dawned on me there might be some kids out there watching this right now that weren't even born. So that's just kind of crazy. And I'm not talking about like, like little toddlers, I'm talking about high school freshmen that weren't even born when uh, the Rams won their last playoff game. 2004, here's a little taste of what was going on in the world in 2004. The Usher, Little John Ludacris, yeah song was number one. The number one movie box office was Shrek 2. George Bush won his second term as president. The big tsunami hit uh, Thailand. Remember that tsunami? That was the last time the, the Rams won a, or won a playoff game was back then. So that's crazy. The last time they advanced to the NFC Championship game was 2001. It was that game, um, or is when they went and faced the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So that was the last time they've even made it as far as the Rams have made it just now and just finished watching the Saints-Eagles game. So Rams will be traveling to New Orleans next Sunday. It's a 12 noon Pacific time game. So uh, it's gonna be the first of the two uh, championship games <clears throat> for each uh, conference. And it's, it's, this is what it's supposed to be, one versus two in the NFC. In the AFC, one versus two. So this is, this is really the best four teams in football this past year. The cream rises to the top. Now, a uh, quick couple of shout outs before I get into any more. I uh, want a big shout out to LTA Combat Sports Los Angeles. Uh, he does a great job covering LA sports, Rams, Lakers, um, even some Dodgers, some MMA. But he, on, on my Pat previous videos, he commented and said, the Rams need to hold Zeke for under 50 yards. Now, I personally didn't think that was possible. Um, I thought I was just being a little like overconfident. A lot of people called him out, but LT, you get the last laugh and you called that out. That was like the impossible um, achievement, you know. I, I don't think anyone really thought the Rams would hold Zeke to under 50 yards. They held him to 47. 47. That's insane. So tip of the cap to you, LT. Um, and then another shout out is the E2 Blue Entertainment, a Cowboys fan, and a lot of the other Cowboys fans who are classy and humble and just having you know good sports dialogue i mean cowboy fans thought their team was going to win rams fans thought their i mean i thought the rams were going to win every game they played this year and they lost three so i've been wrong too and honestly any given sunday is a cliche but it's so true i don't think anyone would have thought that the rams would have rushed for 273 yards the cowboys would have rushed for 50 yards like no one saw that coming no one's the you just got to play the games. So Cowboy fans, you know, talking about your defense, this and the other. Yeah, you guys, your, your defense was great all year. And you had a really good season. You should be proud. Young team. This is just great experience for you guys. But um, the better team won. The Rams outplayed the Cowboys pretty much in every facet. Probably not the passing game, but the Rams just didn't go in on the passing game like the Cowboys did. And, um, and in terms of fans showing up, um, I kind of had an idea that it was going to be like a 70, 30, 60, 40 Rams. But uh, I saw a lot of people's videos from the games, from all the sections they were sitting in. And the Rams fans were making the most noise by far. That was an L.A. home game crowd. Okay. So 
I know there was all this confidence going into the, the Rams can't, the LA Rams fans can't show up. They showed up, okay? They showed up, the team showed up. <clears throat> now, to me, this whole game was one in the line, in the trenches. The offensive line for the Rams, the defensive line of the Rams, they showed up and they took it to the Cowboys. Just like the week before when the Cowboys played the Seahawks, the Cowboys line took it to the Seahawks. But this time the Rams came out and um, and they showed up and they dominated, straight up dominated. Um, <clears throat> if, you, if you weren't really watching the game and you were just to read the team's stats, that would say it all. That would, to that would say it all. The Rams had uh, 21 more plays than the Cowboys, 76 to 55. They had 459 yards, so 308 yards for the Cowboys. I mean, heck, the Rams' rushing yards, 273, was just 35 fewer yards than all of Dallas's total yards. So they had 273 to 50 yards for the Cowboys. And the Cowboys' previous um, single game high as a defense of allowing yards was 178. So the Rams pretty much put another 100 yards on top of that. Um, yards per carry, Rams had 5.7. The Cowboys had 2.3. When the Cowboys averaged uh, allowing 3.8 yards per carry per season for opponents, the Rams had 5.7, so two yards more per carry. And time of possession, 36 minutes to 24 minutes in the Rams' favor. I mean, that just says it all. I mean, you, and if you watch the game, you just knew that the Rams dominated the game. The, the telling stat, though, I mean, time you can say all these other stats are super important. They are. But the one that really stands out to me is third down conversions. Rams were 5 for 11. Cowboys were 1 for 10. 1 for 10. That's just not going to get it done. You need to convert. And I think that's what most fans were for both sides kind of knew would be the thing. If you can put the Cowboys in third and longs, then that's going to be – or you put any team in third and longs, and that's going to be tough for them. But um, – in terms of, now I really want to give a shout out to the offensive line here. No one talks about the Rams' offensive line. You hear about Dallas's offensive line, right? You hear about Zach Martin, Tyron Smith. Rightfully so. Good offensive line. They have been for years. But the Rams' offensive line showed up with a chip on their shoulder. I, mean, I think they kept hearing all these things about the Dallas defense and how stingy they are on the run. You know, they had an extra week off. You tell you, any offensive line out, lineman out there would take an extra week off. It's not rust, it's rest for those big guys. And not only did they show up for the run in supporting CJ and Todd in opening holes, but protecting Jared. Um, so Jared Goff had, he was pressured only once. No sacks, only one pressure and 28 dropbacks of the 3.4%. <coughs> excuse me. That's the second best of any QB this season is being pressured that that uh the least amount so that few times so they the pass protection was brilliant and then in terms of parting the red sea for Gurley and cj i mean that was just insane the it was a franchise the Rams set a franchise record for playoffs for rushing yards at 273. the previous franchise record the one that they broke was in 1986 against the dallas cowboys so I don't know what it is about some about the Cowboys, but the Rams just love running the ball against them in the playoffs. So that was a franchise record. Also set a franchise record for two running backs having over 100 yards. And it was the first time in the playoffs that it happened since 1997, and the Broncos did it then. So, I mean, they're just setting franchise records for the playoffs one after another. C.J. Anderson, man, talk about the free agent pickup of the century. Um, that guy... In his last three games, the the against the Cardinals, the Niners, and now the Cowboys, he's had over a hundred yards in each game, and that with a touchdown in each game, and that is a record for a person to do that, a player to do that, um, like his first three starts with the team. Um, and also, each one of those three games he played for the Rams, uh, his rushing total for those individual games were more than the nine games total rushing yards he had on Carolina this year. I mean, it still blows my mind that he was a free agent. It still blows my mind, you see him running, running there, that no other team could have used him. I mean, the Raiders had him and let him go. That's probably because the Raiders didn't want any good players because they're tanking. But CJ Anderson, I cannot say enough about this guy. 
uh, coming in and just like um, Miley Cyrus, like a freaking wrecking ball. He just came in there and he just, you know, he was using a couple moves, but he was just just pounding it. And he had Gurley in there just, just doing his thing. I mean, those guys, you know, everyone talks about Zeke. And I know Zeke is a top. He was the number one rusher in football this year. But hey, guys, the Rams have a good offensive line and two top running backs. I don't think they're going to keep C.J. Anderson in next year. I think he's his value is going up sky high and some other team will will give him a good good amount of money this offseason. But I love the formula that the Rams have now. And that was something I was very curious to see is how are they going to utilize these two backs uh, coming into the playoffs. They had never played with each other uh, before. And I love it. I absolutely love it. This is a new dynamic that the Rams have that I guess now New Orleans will have tape on going into this game uh, next Sunday. But it's a kind of a different different style. And, you know, everyone talks about, oh, the playoffs is defense and running the ball. Bingo. That's what the Rams just did. Defense and running the ball. Um, t- running the ball. Also, Jared Goff. I wanna, let's just talk about three plays. <clears throat> First of all, you had the... C.J. Anderson fourth and goal when he went for it. And Sean McVay is like, they're always looking, uh, they're not afraid to attack success. And that's what they did on that fourth and goal. Um, Stopping Zeke on the fourth down with Sue and Joyner coming in, that was big time. That was another key play. And then that Jared Goff third and seven scramble. You're talking about like saving a play in the back pocket for the right time. I mean, that was getting kind of nervous time there. Under a minute, third and seven, what's, what are they going to do? Jared Goff peels it and runs to the right. <clears throat> and when Aqib Tlaib came up to him, when I don't know if you guys saw this, when Jared Goff was being interviewed, he was referring to Demarcus Lawrence's, you know, when I see the look in a quarterback's eyes, I want to I want to kill his soul or take his soul. And Aqib Tlaib came up and said, no one effing taking your soul. And Jared Goff said, hey, don't, don't say that that language on TV, but he has a point. So the Cowboys kind of had some bulletin board material. And Jared Goff, a uh, great scramble there. Brandon Cooks, here's a crazy stat. I don't know if it actually counted, but he had not dropped a single pass all year. And, you know, there was that touchdown pass that he had going out of bounds where the ball came loose. I think that might be counted as his first drop of the entire season. Um, that was just great coverage of Byron Jones. So... Um, kind of interesting deal right there. Um, now let's talk about the defense. Everyone thought, myself included, that Zeke is going to get his. Zeke is going to get his. Um, the Rams defense will really be, the, the strength will be the secondary. And they'll lock down Dak and Amari and all the Gallup and all those guys in the secondary. But Zeke is going to get his. Zeke will have over 100 yards, but the Rams will still win. Oh boy, was I wrong. And Dominican Sue, you... you earned your paycheck yesterday. I mean, that was a great performance. Always getting pressure, huge body, pushing the offensive line for the Cowboys around. That was massive. I mean, the Rams are just getting in. They were get, They were caving the offensive line <coughs> like the Cowboys did with the Seahawks the week before. The Rams didn't get home and have any sacks, but similar to what the Cowboys did last week against the Seahawks, that wasn't the thing. It was to stop the running game. Um... Dante Fowler got in the backfield to have that huge hit on Zeke. Um, guys in the secondary we were coming in, Brockers, Donald. I mean, it was just, it, they it, they were stacking the box. <clears throat> they had eight people in the box, eight players in the box consistently. And, you know, Dak picked them apart. And Dak had a really good game. I have to give a lot of credit to Dak Prescott. He did some, you know, he's a good quarterback. He's not a garbage quarterback. <clears throat> and the Cowboys just ask him, to do things differently. And I think his numbers would have been differently if he had Amari the whole season. But um, <clears throat> I just want to also talk about some guys in the in the defense I didn't like. And, I mean, that really was um, Marcus Peters. That was just a garbage game. From the whole face mask holding, like that's just being a brat. You know, kind of like Marcus Peters has been known to do, let his temper get the best of him. Uh, and then he got beat on a couple of plays. LaMarcus Joyner, there's a reason why you're a safety and not a cornerback. And I think that was just Cowboys having some good scheming and, and creating uh, favorable matchups on their part. Uh, when Tlaib went out with, the, I guess they thought, concussion protocol, I was like, oh gosh, here we go. You know, he needs, that's when Dallas kind of started chipping away. 
I mean, I there was a point in that game where I honestly was like, put Troy Hill, like, <coughs> get Marcus Peters out of there, put Troy Hill on on whoever. Uh, it was, <coughs> excuse me, it was just a terrible, terrible day for Marcus Peters in some of the secondary. And that that penalty on Talib pushing Amari Cooper out of bounds was just stupid. I mean, that was what a third or fourth down, and Prescott had nothing to no nowhere to throw. And that, what was that on, like, the 20-something yard line? And now it's on the one? And they just, like, handed them a touchdown right there. That was just such a bonehead play. But, <coughs> excuse me, I think that means i got to wrap this up. But I couldn't be more any more proud of the Rams. I think this game was really, it really came down to their pride. I feel like, you know, a lot of people were doubting them, talking about the Cowboys, talking about the Cowboys' defense, talking about Zeke. And the Rams took that personal. And this is also coming off of last year's disappointing playoff loss to the Falcons in the first round. They were not going to let that happen again. And I couldn't be happier for these guys and how they showed up and what they did. And I'm really looking forward to the game against the Saints. I mean, the Saints, the Eagles are not, a, I can't, we can't take the Eagles lightly, but, you know, the Eagles almost beat the Saints in New Orleans. And Saints weren't looking great. They just did enough. So I'm going to have a game preview for them coming up talk about that a little bit more kind of go in depth on that i'm sure the new orleans saints fans are going to come out crazy but um a lot of respect for the cowboys uh and uh this is just just a great feeling for the rams fans for the longtime Rams fans we all deserve it so i want to thank everyone for watching um if you haven't subscribed please do so for all the legacy all the new subscribers thank you so much uh this is a great time for the rams let's soak it up and before i go it's go Rams, but it's also whose house? I think you guys know the rest. Go Rams.